from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good Friday afternoon, everyone. We are kicking off an expanded edition of First at Four. First at Four as Metro Detroit deals with a nasty winter storm. Uh, snow just part of the equation with bitter cold and winds whipping around at 50 to 60 miles an hour, making things miserable out. Uh, right now, let's take a live look at the conditions all over Metro Detroit. On the screen, you're seeing uh, Novi, Mount Clemens, Ann Arbor, and the spot where I uh, 696 meets I-75. And of course, this storm lands just two days before Christmas, putting a lot of holiday plans in jeopardy, especially if they involve travel. The timing of this very interesting, and that's one reason we are tracking the exact track 4D radar so closely. Let's get right to Kim Adams. Kim? Well, we're still under that winter storm warning in effect until at least 4 a.m. Saturday morning. Now, you might be wondering, why would we be under a winter storm warning when we barely have any snow on the ground? We talked about this throughout the entire week. Snow is only one part of this storm. The other part, the wind and the bitter cold. And you combine those together and you still have dangerous conditions out there tonight. So the main concern now is not the snow. It is the wind and also these plummeting temperatures. Five is the current temperature at City Airport, also in Pontiac, seven in Lapeer, nine in Port Huron, two at Metro, one in Ann Arbor. But when you get winds over 45 miles per hour, Here's what the current wind chills are. Uh, the temperature change in the last, this is actually the last 24 hour temperature change. We've seen a 37 degree drop since 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon, a 39 degree drop in Ann Arbor and a 34 degree drop in Pontiac. So it is 34 degrees colder right now than it was just 24 hours ago. Right now, the current wind chills are well below zero, 20 below in Mount Clemens, 22 in uh, at Metro Airport, 16 in Pontiac, 17 at City Airport. Highest wind gust reported now 52 mile per hour gust in Flint, 48 in Metro Airport and 49 the highest wind gust in uh, the city of Detroit. Radar, we're still seeing some snow on the radar as well, and we've still got those high winds continuing anywhere from 40 to 45 miles per hour. Now, the heaviest snow still focused up in the thumb. This is where we expected the heavier snow to be this afternoon. We're getting some lake enhanced snow showers, uh, Croswell, Port Sanilac, Sandusky. Uh, snow totals, though, here in Metro Detroit, as you can see, not as high as what we had originally anticipated, but we still have the wind and we still have those wind chills again well below zero. So we're going to continue to monitor the radar, but our focus is really on the temperatures at this hour. To keep up to date on when you have the temperatures in your neighborhood continue to fall and when they'll start to rise back up again, just go to the App Store, download the Forewarn Weather app. Uh, you can just get it right in the App Store, type in WDIV. It's absolutely free and it's the Forewarn Weather app. Had thousands of people downloading that app just this week alone, so it was built for times like this. A lot of folks lucky enough to not have to go anywhere today. That's good, uh, but we have seen some accidents, and it's the blowing snow that's causing a lot of the problems. Yeah, take a look here. This was the scene this morning. This is on I-96 West. This is at Beach Daily. A semi there jackknifed, closing the westbound lanes for a while. Luckily, though, no one was hurt. Right now, local force Tim Pamplin is carefully doing a live drive hoping to give you some sense of the conditions. And Tim, where are you right now and how are things looking? Yeah, southbound 75, Sandra, uh, Troy, uh, Square Lake Road area, sheet of ice out here. As you came to us at the top of the four o'clock uh, newscast there, you saw the uh, MSP on the side of the road there. A couple of vehicles had spun out there. You, you get this full sense of security when you see the roads like this, these vehicles whizzing by. This is ice under here. I've seen plows going through. And what they're doing is they're blowing the snow off, re revealing the ice underneath. You think you're going along just fine, and then suddenly black ice, and you just lose it. Let's keep the speed slow. On average, around town on the freeways, they're fairly decent. I'd give them a C, a C minus. The surface streets, when you get off the off the main thoroughfares, that's a D minus to an E, sometimes an F over in Rochester. Very treacherous conditions over there. Uh, we're going to be on a live drive as long as we can, as long as I feel safe on these roads. We'll bring you these live pictures, keep you updated with a much bigger, broader picture of the traffic situation in our town. Let's go over to Kim DeGiulio. Kim. 
All right, glad to see that you're driving safe out there, Tim, and that you feel safe. But again, visibility is going to be the issue today. If you do need to head out on the roadways with that blowing snow, even though it doesn't look like a lot of snow out there when it blows, uh, that can be dangerous as far as visibility goes. Now, the main story this morning, or sorry, not this morning, this evening, uh, is that we do have slowdowns all over our area of free day, freeways, but it's not because of accidents. It's just because of those conditions. So that is good, smart, cautious travel. Take a look at these uh, these speeds here. We're seeing cars traveling at around 40 to 50 miles per hour here on I-94, 45 miles per hour, uh, also 43 miles per hour over on I-75 and down by Allen Park, 41 miles per hour, also 48 miles per hour over on 696. Now, a lot of you I know do need to head to the airport. You have travel plans. Remember to check your flights to see if they're canceled or delayed. But if you're traveling over on I-94 between I-75 to I-275, that drive will take you 26 miles minutes, which is a lot longer than we're used to. But again, that is because of those conditions and people traveling cautiously at this hour. Uh, but the good news is that there are no accidents in Metro Detroit to report at this time. Sandra. All right. Thank you, Kim. And Kim mentioned, you know, the storm affecting several states, thousands of flights during this very busy holiday travel week. You are looking live right now at Detroit's Metro Airport and you can see the visibility looks. I mean, it is hard to see anything right now. Actually, we are looking at trying to find out the percentage of the outgoing flights there that have been canceled today. We're working on getting that number for you right now. Consumer investigator Hank Winchester has been talking to travelers and Hank, what's the mood like out there right now? Well, Sandra, it really just depends on whether, you know, the flight's able to take off or not. So a, a range of moods, right? A lot of people frustrated getting here, finding out their flight has, in fact, been canceled. Take a live look behind me here. This is the main security checkpoint at McNamara. Looks easy breezy, right? No big issue. Well, that's not necessarily the case. There are so many people on the other side of security uh, learning that their flights have either been fully canceled or that there are big delays. Our Karen Drew, for example, has been uh, waiting to board a flight since about 7.30 this morning, still waiting on the other side. We've talked to dozens of passengers today who got here to the airport only to find out last minute the flight was canceled. Right now, looking at the big board, we probably have about 20 cancellations. Cities like Toronto, Traverse City, Albany, New York, Amsterdam. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So it is key that you check in with the airline before you make your way here to the airport. As I mentioned, we talked to some passengers. Take a listen. Well, I got an email yesterday morning at 8.30 selling our flight today that was supposed to leave at 8.25, direct nonstop to Seattle, was canceled. They had rebooked us on another flight today at 2 to Boston, and then another flight from Boston at 6 to Seattle, landing at 11, 10.25 tonight. That's a long day. That's a brutal day. A lot of long days for a lot of people. We're told most of the hotels uh, within Romulus already booked as people uh, begin to make their way to hotels and motels, hoping that they'll be able to take off here from Metro tomorrow morning. For now, we're live here at uh, the McNamara Terminal. Hank Winchester, help me, Hank, Local 4. Yeah, Hank, so many folks stranded. I know a lot of folks already looking ahead to tomorrow, Christmas Eve. Are you hearing anything at all already about possible cancellations for tomorrow or even delays? Yes, we've uh, heard regarding Spirit United and a few select del uh, Delta flights that have already uh, pulled the trigger regarding uh, Christmas Eve, early morning flights that are being canceled. That's why it is imperative that you really pay attention to the app or log on, call the airlines, uh, hit them up on Twitter, do whatever you can to try to get the latest information before you make your way here to Metro. Yeah. Sandra? Could be a tricky couple of days there at the airport. Thank you so much, Hank. We're going to get an update from you in about an hour. Well, all week long, we've been telling you about the high winds being one of the real factors making these conditions even trickier than the average Michigan snowfall. Uh, we're just being told about 13,000 power outages happening right now. Rod Maloney keeping an eye on that part of the story. We know the power companies were gearing up for just that possibility. Rod. Well, Devin, that number just jumped up in the last couple of minutes because it's been about 10, 9, 10,000 for most of the day. And if you look behind me here, you can see that there are a number of trucks. Uh, these are the remaining four. They've had 10 vehicles here all day because one of the wires came down here. In fact, and on the map, it was a big green splotch that had been there much of the day. Uh, they said they had about 500 people out, but when we drove around the neighborhood, we didn't actually find anybody whose power was out or was having to do something extraordinary because the power 
power was out. It has since been restored. That green splotch is now gone. But let's take some video, take a look at some video that we shot a little bit earlier of the work they were doing. And um, you got to take your hat off to the, the guys, and they were all guys here today, who were up in the buckets and were out there trying to repair these lines because they had to go up in the buckets in 20-mile-an-hour winds and snow and ice, and that had to have been greatly unpleasant. Now, one of the things that we've noticed about the map, the DTE outage map, is that most of the major outages are well north of I-69, up toward Saginaw, Genesee County area. Um, and down here, it's been kind of spotty in small places, a few places in Detroit, a few places uh, downriver over by Sio Township. Looks like they've had some issues, but DTE has apparently been able to stay on top of most of this for most of the day. Um, and so right now, the news is looking pretty good, but as you can see, the wind is picking up, and uh, let's, let's face it, the night is young when it comes to this storm. Back to you. So right, Rod. Uh, we'll continue to follow Rod's situation there near Novi. Now, the weather made it very difficult for firefighters who were back battling a massive fire at a building on Detroit's east side. That fire broke out early this morning at a building on East Lafayette in Canton. The building houses cars and boats. The wind made the fire spread faster, much faster than it normally would have. It also pushed smoke towards an apartment building blocks away from there as well. Dozens of people living there had to be evacuated. Firefighters talked to us about how they're managing to keep people safe in these conditions. Keep all the citizens away because it can be icy. We're using water. Water and below freezing temperatures don't mix. It turns into ice. So we want everybody to stay away from this area, Canton and Lafayette. Number two, the wind direction. At any moment, this wind can change, and it can blow the fire from east to west, north to south. So we want everybody to stay away. That's why we're protecting all the exposures, all the houses around in the area. We're making sure they don't catch on fire. Some very tough conditions to fight a fire, and no injuries were reported. That's the good news. We still don't have a word on a possible cause. Our Jacqueline Francis will be there live coming up at 5 o'clock tonight. She is working on getting the very latest on the fire and also get more details about what's happening right now in that neighborhood as well. We also have much more to come in the next two and a half hours. Here's another look at our live drive. Tim Pamplin right now heading through Oakland County near Troy. Uh, a pretty good glaze on most of the roadways right now. And of course, remember, a lot of this came uh, with rain first. So there's a, a glaze of ice underneath a lot of this snow. A uh, little tricky driving in a lot of parts around town. Uh, coming up, Paul Gross going to join us to do some deep dives into the impact of the storm. Also, live reports coming up from Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb counties. So keep it locked in right here. Also first at four, other news of the day today. Will Congress beat the buzzer? The House needs to pass a new budget to avoid a government shutdown. We're going to tell you where things stand right now. Overseas, a mass shooting in a busy neighborhood days before Christmas. Prosecutors reveal the suspect has been in trouble before. What we know so far, next.